Good evening, everyone. If you'd like to be seated, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Okay. Tuesday, November 12th, and I'd like for everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for 10 seconds of silence. Thank you. You may be seated. Ian, would you call the roll? Commissioner Flagg? Here. Commissioner Hanna? Here. Commissioner Kuhnagel? Here. Mayor Kennedy? Here. Vice Mayor Colombo asks to be excused. First up is our presentation from the Sheriff's Department. If you would like to come forward and give your report. I'd also like to tell everyone in the audience tonight that if you come 15 minutes before our commission meeting, the Sheriff is always here and you may talk to him privately. Good evening, you guys. Hi. Did you guys get the uh, report already emailed? Yeah, November 8th, it was sent out. Um, these are the stats for October um, 2019 for Amy Rocks Beach. Uh, page one, the uh, major crimes here, we had 11 larcenies and two vehicle thefts. I'll, I'll talk about those here in the, uh, in the end. Page two, um, six people were arrested with uh, 12 Right, 12 counts of um, 12 charges. Um, page three, there were 792 events with 1,144 units responding. I always like to point out the top half of that is mostly uh, self-initiated activity. So you see the, uh, the higher numbers are typically us stepping out with people or, or traffic stops and so on. Um, page four, is uh, there was five crashes. Uh, one of those was uh, somewhat, uh, it was ended in arrest, DUI, and uh, battery on law enforcement officer. Um, so we're not seeing really a pattern of a, a location, but uh, definitely a little bit of a pickup of crashes in the area. Um, saying that, we had uh, 294 citations um, for the month of October. That uh, translates to 25 citations, 261 of those were warnings, six uh, voting warnings, and one voting citation. Um, the 11 larcenies that I talked about earlier, on um, October 21st, we had uh, some, I'm assuming, group of kids come through Bahia Vista, Bahia Vista Drive, um, and several burglaries were um, done on that street only on that finger um, they got into eight cars they stole one um, but uh, my concern is they just went down one finger and found eight open cars and one one with a key fob in it and we're able to steal the car so if we can get the message out to to lock vehicles um, doesn't take much time to walk down the Hia Vista drive it doesn't give us much time to, to find it um, obviously, we're going to do more and be in the neighborhoods, but uh, just want to try to get that message out there to lock your cars. Um, the two stolen vehicles, one was a, uh, a it was a car on Bellia Vista. The other one was a, a golf cart um, that was stolen. And the time frame was so long that we really don't have a lot to go off of. That someone who doesn't <laughs> constantly live here, they came back and it was missing. And then he also had a lot of friends that were allowed to use it, and so on, kind of mixes things up in the investigation. Um, other than that, um, we had, as far as the arrests go, we did have a uh, Grand Theft Auto arrest. Um, we had a, it was basically a uh, rental car that wasn't returned, um, and that, that was an arrest here in the county, or sorry, in the uh, city. Uh, possession of controlled substance. We had some undercover narcotics detectives doing work out here. I don't have all the details on that, nor would I give them out too much. But uh, they were able to make a couple of rests out here, so that's good work. Uh, is there any questions that you guys have? 
Does the commission have any questions for Sheriff's Office? No. Thank, Thank you very you. much. We'll you guys have a good night. Thank you. We'll see you next time. At this time, I'm going to have all of the veterans just come up in front here. I'm going to come down. Last year, I had the opportunity during Veterans Day to do a small ceremony because not only was it Veterans Day, but also for Thanksgiving. And I went to the uh, Veterans Day um, service that was at the VA this year. And I know our V has gone in the past, and it was very touching. And uh, so I asked some of our veterans who live in Indian Rocks Beach, and I'm glad that there are some who are here today that I didn't know, to be a part of a little of what I think we are in Indian Rock Speech. So for me, this is a, a great honor to, to honor our veterans. And I'd like to acknowledge how much it means to me to call each, each of you my friend. This past April, my family lost our veteran, my father. He was 96. And my whole family, we know all his war stories. We know when he was in a boat and he got shrapnel in his legs. And when he was wounded in the Battle of the Bulge. And through my dad, we learned to the significance of courage you have and the price you pay for keeping all of us safe. And our commission has a great respect for all of you. We owe you gratitude for the example you have set as a service person, but also at home. And the thing that I love is all of you represent the enormous diversity of ethnicity and sex and religion and those that are non-religious, color of skin, and the fact that you, de you would defend us regardless of our attributes that define us as a mil define you as a military person <coughs> protecting our country. We are thankful you came home to serve as a postman and a council member and a businesswoman and a dentist and entrepreneurs and the many roles that our service people come home and occupy in the next chapter of their lives. But most of all, we love that you share Indian Rock speech with all of us. And we are honored that you are part of our community. So with that, I'd like to give each one of you a candle. And say, thank you for your So this is the veterans that we have this year. I'd like you to meet them, and I'd like you to thank them for their service.
At this time, we will have public comment, and any member of the audience may come forward, give his or her name and address, and state any comment or concern that you may have regarding any matter which the Commission has control over, excluding an agenda item. So the audience knows that this is David Ardman, who just became our new Indian Rock Speech Fire Commissioner. So if you ever have a question about the fire, you need to contact David, and you'll have to give them your email and your phone number. And um, he's going to start from now on coming to our meetings and giving us a report. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, David Ardman, 351 La Hacienda Drive. And I've been sitting in seat number two for almost a month but thought I'd still come and provide a few items of note from the commission. Um, I did speak with Chief Burton today. He gave me a couple of items as well. <clears throat> he did want uh, to let you know that uh, the uh, fire district is currently reviewing fire code as it relates to short-term rentals. Um, all short-term vacation rental units must meet minimum standards that are set forth in the Florida Building Code and they may differ uh, from single family dwellings to those dwellings that have people in and out. So there'll be more to report on that soon. Uh, also wanted to let you know that repairs are finally complete to the new 48 foot long pumper aerial combination. It's a beautiful vehicle, I saw it. Um, it was delivered to the fire district a year ago and then shortly thereafter it was in a terrible vehicular accident and taken out of service. And it's back, finally. I did want you to know, though, that uh, the fire district incurred about a $23,000 expense that's not recoverable to keep the vehicle it replaced in service. Things like tires, things like that. So that, that was a, an expense to the district. The commission gave a glowing review for Chief Burton's performance during the last fiscal year. Obviously, I didn't participate, but had I been able to do so, I would have given him a glowing report as well. <coughs> and lastly, as I guess the city manager is not here tonight, but uh, our first meeting of the fireworks task group is set for Monday, November 18, and I very much look forward to participating. So thanks. Thank you, David. Okay. Anyone else from the audience that would be of three minutes would like to speak at this time? Good evening. Hi, Michael. Hi, Michael Davis, 14130 Rosemary Lane, 2301-33774, previous IRB resident, 34 years. Uh, to be crystal clear, this representation I'm performing as well as the one I presented on October 8th, is in no way about Florida state legislation on short-term rentals, nor is it about a for or against vacation rentals whatsoever. My presentation focuses on the dollar amount in the IRB business tax receipt application so unreasonably low at current time compared to many other Florida citadels and also to mention, again, the professional compliance company specializing in vaca vacation rental monitor, mon monitoring. Excuse me. Vacation rentals have now been an IRB for about a decade. That represents a hefty amount of lost revenue for infrastructure and so on at that current amount. Current IRB BTR, business tax receipt application, and fee equates to approximately a parking ticket. But now let's move forward. Please perform your due diligence scoping out various compliance tracking companies that also offer a la carte pricing helping local towns flesh out unregistered vacation rentals, leveling the playing field for those owners already doing the right thing. Holmes Beach on west coast of Florida of similar size, population with small town atmosphere, just raised their business tax receipt effective 924.19 for vacation rental certificates to $545. Renewals every two years, there is the same amount. It includes some inspections. IRB short-term rentals also exist in non 
hotel condominiums, now zone CT on the west side of Gulf Boulevard. Diligent consideration is requested in these categories, including the fact that the BTR tax receipt application and BTR tax receipt affidavit both cite that all applicable laws, including FEMA regulations limiting use of ground level space, shall also be in compliance. Com compliance companies can also help in these categories. Communication with this across the board, citywide, cohesion shall prove to greatly enhance the culture and morale in town regarding vacation rentals vis-a-vis year-round residency. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Michael. Is there anyone else at this time that would like to come forward? With that, we'll close the public comments, and we will go to the report of the city attorney. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, briefly, I'm just returned from uh, Pensacola with Leadership Florida, representing uh, our community and uh, North Pinellas and my firm. Uh, through that program, it's an excellent opportunity to get to know about other areas of the state and uh, community leaders throughout. Um, wonderful explanations of things that they're doing in those communities to build and revitalize. Uh, outside of that, continue to work with the uh, city manager on a host of issues. Uh, you can expect some memoranda in the next few weeks or so on various issues. We are, um, the legislative session is formally in the spring. Uh, people have begun filing bills. Uh, as of Friday, there was no indication of a filed short-term rental or vacation rental bill. That does not mean one is not forthcoming, just not there yet. Uh, other than that, I have nothing else to report, but I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Do any of the commissioners have any questions for Randy, our city attorney? Ed? Randy, could you look into and come back to us with uh, whether or not um, business tax rental, business tax receipts would have to be commonly applied across all of the rental categories, or if one could make a differentiation between zoning districts? I can look into that, and I, and I recognize that uh, you asked that I look into that. I, I plan to do so as it relates to any future discussion this body has, has contemplated on that. I would also add that language is important <clears throat> as you talk about these issues. And so as you look at neighboring jurisdictions or jurisdictions throughout Florida, there is a difference between a fee applied for a uh, what some communities may call a vacation rental certificate versus the business tax receipt. Um, and so you will see in some communities that they have their own licensing system and they charge a certain fee for that particular certificate, uh, which is distinct from and in addition to uh, the business tax receipt. Uh, this community, as it contemplated its short-term rental uh, regime, if you will, uh, did not opt to create an entire vacation rental certificate program, but rather said, look to DVPR, uh, look to the other agencies, come to us and get your, your business tax receipt, BTR, but we have not instituted a program where you have a vacation rental certificate or short-term rental certificate, which is some nomenclature you'll see in other jurisdictions, with, which often does come with an elevated charge beyond the ordinary business tax receipt charge, but I can look into that. Thank you, Commissioner. I will. Anything else? Yeah. Anybody else okay? Mr. Carpenter, do you have any report for us tonight? Uh, no, no ma'am, no report. Okay, well then we'll start with the commission. Commissioner Phil Hanna, would you like Thank to make a... Uh, no, not uh, anything um, uh, pertinent this evening. I would like to address uh, that the uh, city, through Mr. Carpenter and his team, won another award. Would you tell a little bit about what that award was? Because we get it most every year. We don't get it, but we were it, right? Uh, sure. We, we received uh, an annual certificate of achievement from the Government Finance Officers Association for submittal of our previous year annual financial report. So that's, that's, that's good news. And obviously, I think we, 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 we strive to get that, and we did. So thank you. Thank you and your team for uh, the great job that you do every year for us. Just so the audience knows, um, the certificate is Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. So, Dan's doing a really good job. <laughs> okay, um, let's go with Commissioner Hofnagel. Do you have any 
Yeah, yeah I was going to come up in the uh, in the public uh, comment uh, to thank the city on behalf of Action 2000 for their uh, help in uh, Oktoberfest, and my wife Julie was going to do that, and I'm standing in her stead to communicate uh, Action 2000's gratitude to the city staff and to uh, all the help that they received to have a very successful October Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Commissioner Flagg? Well, I think this evening what I'd like to say is um, over the weekend I had a chance to go to the Taste of IRB. It seems like our city is so gracious and allows so many events and works hard to make sure they all come off without a hitch. It was a successful event and um, I'd like to thank the homeowners, and I see some of you that volunteered for the taste, and uh, it, was, it was a huge success. And our restaurants were had great exposure, so it was a wonderful event all around. So any of you that were involved or got a chance to go, thank you. Thank you, Diane. And also concerned with the taste of IRB, there was a gentleman who came in, up and had to leave but wanted to make sure that because of the workers, our workers are there and clean up, that he tasted IRB, that the homeowners were very appreciative of all their help at the event. So just to, it's on record. I always give a calendar of events that are coming up, so in case anybody would be interested, we have uh, November 14th is the turkey donations at Krabby Bills. And if you go there and you give a, you give a turkey, uh, that is with Century 21, and the home, homeowners are involved with that, and those turkeys go over to the food pantry. On November 16th and 17th, there at the Beach Art Center will be your fill-in, your painting with color and light workshop. November 16th also has a historical museum potluck, and I believe that's at noon. Uh, November 19th, we have the third visioning session uh, here for our city. And if you have not been to any of the ones previously, this would be a great time to come and just investigate some of what your fellow neighbors and what we are looking into and how uh, our, our residents want to see the city as we progress in the future. We have our citywide garage sale is November 23rd. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone this year. We also, on November 30th, will have the fall yard sale. We have a, um, there is a, the, um, we, we have another group, and I don't know if all of you know, it's called the Greentown Kids, and it's for some of our young families in town. And every, the first Monday month at Slice, if you go in there and eat, they will, um, donate towards Greentown Kids and also uh, to the food pantry. I think I have that right. December 2nd is Monday with the Mayor inside the auditorium from 4 to 6.30. Our Christmas tree lighting is December 6th at the Pocket Park. And um, the Rotary Club of IRB has their big game drawing at Slice on December 8th. We have the Holiday Street Parade also on December 8th. December 11th is the um, homeowners and the IRB tour drive with uh, Century 21. December 14th is the IRB, IRB tour of homes. And then the 21st is the Light of Both Parade. So I hope you have your pencils after that because we have a lot of things this morning. And with that, um, I'm, I'm done and we'll go to number four, which is additions and deletions. Do we have any? Yes. Do you guys want to just have a quick question <coughs> about the coyotes? Can't, you can only do that in public. So. Right. Um, why don't we make it our last? Sure. Let's make it our, our last. Is that okay with you two? Everybody okay with that? Okay. Uh, and let's go to the consent agenda. Um, the approval, Randy. Mayor, there's one item on the consent agenda. Item A, approval of the October 8, 2019 regular city commission meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. okay. Motion to approve. Is there a second? A second. Okay. okay. Sorry. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Public hearings. We are on uh, 6A. 
This is the BOA case number 2019-05. Randy, would you read this for me? Uh, thank you, Mayor. There's no ordinance with this. However, as this is a board of adjust adjustment, <clears throat> a case originating on the, from the board of adjustment concerning a variance, this is a quasi-judicial uh, matter. In a quasi-judicial matter, you are not making law, but rather applying facts to the criteria established within your code. Before we begin, I must ask if any of you have conducted a site visit to the subject property for the limited purpose of evaluating this application? No. no. Record reflect all responded in the negative. Have any of you had any ex parte communications with the applicant? No. no. Record reflect all have responded in the negative. Uh, with that, will anybody who intends to give any testimony before this body on this particular application please stand and raise your right hand? That is to include staff or anybody who intends to speak on Board of Adjustment case number 2019-05, that's for 801 and a half Gulf Boulevard. Do you, anybody who wishes to speak, that includes the city staff, applicant, the representative, or anyone else who intends to come before this body. Thank you. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give before this body is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. With that, staff may begin this presentation. Uh, this is a subject case is Board of Adjustment case number 2019-05, a variance request from section 110-103A to allow for the enlargement on a non-conforming premise to elevate the structure and provide for a deck and stairs on or at the property of 801 and a half Gulf Boulevard, Indian Rocks Beach, Florida, and legally described as New Navy Beach, Block B, Lot 12, Parcel Number 12-30-14. 5932-002-0120. Alright, um, this property is located at 801 and a half uh, Gulf Boulevard. Um, it is the property um, that sits behind um, the building that's actually fronting on Gulf Boulevard. I do have a little area here. The house um, to the north um, was owned, they were all owned by one original person at one time, and that house has been torn down and there's a little, um, garage in the back there. So what the applicant would want to do is probably a, a survey that shows exactly which house we're talking about. It was getting um, confusing to the neighbor. He thought we were working on the north, uh, I mean on the west house instead of the east house. So, um, okay, and these are um, some of the pictures on this uh, proposal. And what, what the intent is, they want to raise the house, get it out of the floodplain. They want to keep the original structure, um, they were going to want to remove this front porch here um, when they elevate it, and then when they elevate it, they want to put the open porch across the whole front of the house and stairs down. And here's another picture. That whole front porch would be gone, and you can see the side view again of that. Um, now as far as, this is the existing floor plans. Um, you can see where the existing porch is on the front. Uh, and this is the uh, proposed plan where um, they would take off that existing porch and they would put a covered deck across the whole front of the house and then also um, stairs going down the side. So what they're doing is they're expanding uh, the non-conforming use <coughs> here because they're making the deck wider and then actually by adding the stairs you make it non-conforming too even though they have to have it. So, um, and we talked about, you know, where you could chop the deck here or move the deck over here. It, aesthetically, you know, it just really didn't look that well. So this is the final effect um, of what it would look like on, um, on the house here. So, um, and they have parking underneath. So, do you have any questions? Here's the commissioners, Ed. Brian. So the elevation is all above flood on the living level. Right. No. Would the applicant like to come forward? You may. Uh, my job's maybe. I've got to have to do this. Maynard Baker, uh, 20907 Bowman Road, Spring Hill, Florida. Uh, my job's made easy because you did a great job explaining the project. Uh, basically, we're just we're the owner wants to keep the cottage feel. Uh, he doesn't want to tear all these down and you know, come back and build something new. He likes the, the, um, the cottages and to save those 
uh, we want to elevate this out of the floodplain so we can uh, save the building. And in doing so, we just want to get permission to open that deck up. Actually, the uh, condition living space of the house actually goes down because right now that front area is you know, under roof and condition. When you open it up, it's actually open deck. And underneath is just storage and parking. There's no additional rooms or anything on the, on the first floor because that's obviously not allowed by FEMA or code. So. I hope you'll make one other comment too that really didn't look up. Previously, the entrance came off of the um, east side of the building and you walk right into the kitchen. Um, and what they've done here is move the entrance, you can see, to the front of the building so the steps would come down there and make it a much more functional use in the house. Hopefully get your washer dryer in there. <laughs> Do any of the commissioners have any questions for the applicant? Ed? I'm not sure if it's going to be for any of the applicants. So it, it looks like the net net you're encroaching three or four feet off to the west more. Is that what it says? Oh, right, off to the off to the west. We'll be encroaching. The, actually, that's into the existing property. Um, what it is is. Um, this part right here, let me show you, if you look on, if you look on the survey, I think it's you. I was looking at this in detail. This piece right here, that's the question. Yeah. This, this corner area is going to be expanded. That's why I was reading the minutes to the, yeah, to the they asked that's why they are saying it didn't really change the uh, overall footprint. Right. And actually, you're, you're changing it on the other side, too, to expand that deck over here. So. But this one would still just would be within like seven feet of that setback. So I was looking at the distance to make sure yeah. that So the variance is what, for the corner of the deck? Is that what we're talking about? It's for expanding a, a, a non-conforming use. So we're looking at um, <coughs> whatever's there, whatever you expand, is you're expanding the non-conforming right, use. non-conforming because of the front setback then? Um, number one, it's two units on one lot. Yeah, but I think we addressed that. Yeah. I think at an earlier commission meeting we talked about that. So it's not conform, but what is the variance then besides the two lots, the two houses on the small lot? Right, and because actually, if, I mean, it is not conforming because of this back setback. That made it not conforming. Yeah, conforming. So yeah, you're re, are we reapproving the existing non conformance on the back corner, or are we approving the additional non conformance on the front, or both? Um, it's, it, it's existing non-conforming to begin with yes. because of that back setback, yes. okay? And then we are expanding that non-conforming use. On the front. On the front. Mm -hmm. To the same general footprint. Right. It's, it's kind of filling in those corners. It is, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to have you, does anyone else have a question, Phil? Okay, I'm just going to have you sit right here and we're going to... Thank you. Thank you. And we're going to open up the public hearing if anyone would like to make a comment about this application. Okay, hearing none, we're going to close the public hearing. Is there a motion? Well, before we move to a motion, uh, staff has an opportunity to uh, make any final statements it wishes to on the application. I, I think I don't have anything else to say. This time. As does the applicant, applicant. get the final word, sir. Thank you. Motion. motion to approve uh, EOA case uh, number 2019-05 at 801 and a half Gulf Boulevard. I'll second. Second. Uh, so I do just have a somewhat related question, Randy, for you. I remember we did something about these non-conforming lots and we, we made something where they didn't have to come for a variance. So, this is coming because there's some additional changes. Is that is that what it is? It was too small. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. It was when um, because it didn't meet the 5808 square footage oh, for right. our okay. duplex. Yes, right. Is where we and then we changed it to saying if the lot was you know a platted lot within that um, RM or whatever district, you could still do a duplex. Okay. So that this isn't. So this is not conforming only because of this. Not the size of the law, it's the setback. It's because of that setback. Yeah. Okay. Right, thank you. What you uh, said? I think <laughs> you know, I read through the I read through the BOA case and I know they went back and forth and um, 
I can see that they did some good uh, due diligence on this. I, I don't think it materially changes the footprint, uh, and I would support uh, this. I think that the hardship is that the, um, the compliance with the FEMA uh, makes it such that the ability to put a staircase in uh, causes it to continue to be a little more non-conforming than it was, but not materially so. So I, I do think that's a sufficient hardship here. Okay, and Deanne, you were, Diane, you were the second? Yes. In a motion? Yes. Okay, Deanne, will you call the roll? Commissioner Hanna? Yes. Commissioner Black? Yes. Commissioner Hucknagel? Yes. Mayor Commissioner Kennedy? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. We are going to go to uh, 6B, which is the BOA case number 2019-06. Andy, would you like to present? Uh, no presentation, Mayor, but just briefly, again, this is a quasi-judicial matter. To that end, have any members of this body conducted any site visits for the limited purpose of evaluating this application? No. The record reflect all responded in the negative. Same question as it relates to ex parte communications between commissioners and the applicant? No. no. Let the record reflect all responded in the negative. Before we continue, will anybody, uh, staff has been sworn for the purpose of all three hearings. Is there anybody who wishes to offer any, to anybody wishing to offer any testimony before this body concerning 411 Harbor Drive South BOA case number 2019-06? Please rise and raise your right hand. This would include the applicant, the representative, or any members of the public. Sir, do you swear or affirm that the test, thank you. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give before this body is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Uh, with that, staff, uh, before, sorry, before we begin, this is Board of Adjustment case number 2019-06, a variance request from code section 110-3447F to allow for a waterfall structure to exceed the six-foot length and diameter requirement for property located at 411 Harbor Drive South, Indian Rocks Beach, Florida, and legally described as 17th edition to the re-revised map of Indian Beach, Lot 13, and, and the north 25 feet, of Lot 14, parcel number 06-3015-4233-6-000-0130. Randy, I apologize. I did speak to the applicant about this structure, and I just want that noted into the record. Okay. Uh, Mayor, you said you, you have had a communication with the applicant about this. I did. Uh, do you feel in any way that that communication will impair your ability to impartially adjudicate this matter? I, it will not. Okay. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, staff... All right, um, yes, uh, Mr. Basila wants to um, add a, a waterfall structure to his house. Uh, we do allow them, but we only allow them to be um, six foot by um, six foot. Um, what he is proposing is a larger structure. Um, this is the survey. The house is under construction at this time. Um, you have, he does have a pool in, so you can see the pictures of the pool here. Um, and the structure would go over this end of the pool. Um, and then here's Dom. Um, this is looking the other way. So this is probably the best shot right here of what he wants to do. Um, it would still not exceed the four foot in height limits. He wants, but he wants it longer, which is 12 feet. Um, he does this for a living and is very passionate about this. Um, I think we've heard from both neighbors, and um, they are they're fine with it. The one neighbor had a little issue with. Um, some water, but I think that was because the gutters hadn't been put on the house yet, and um, you know the, the swales hadn't been shaped, so that's been done now. So on um, that, so but that that's basically the intent of this whole thing is to exceed the six foot uh, length um, for the uh, waterfall structure. Hi, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. This is a closed hearing at this point. Right now, staff <coughs> is giving their presentation. There will be an opportunity for public inquiry, yeah, public yeah. comment. All right, great, thank you. When that time should come, if he still desires to speak at that time. Okay, um, do you have any questions on this? There's no side setback or anything like that. It's just the actual length of the structure. That well, it has to meet the, um, uh, so I don't know about There's no here. variance for that. No. The variance is that this actual rock structure will be physically wider than six feet. Right. <coughs> Phil, do you have any questions? Or Kenny? Diane? No. This time? 
Yeah, but but, but sir, sir, at this time it's the applicant's opportunity to present on the matter. Good evening. Uh, just looking for the... You need to you know, state your name. Oh, sorry, Steve Rashema, uh, 411 Harbor Drive South. You I just did a really good job. Uh, really nothing else that I would have to add to it um, other than you know, just needing that uh, length to carry across the, the pool in that area. Um, we do a lot of water features, uh, my company, and uh, all over the beaches and uh, a lot of other municipalities do allow larger rock structures. Um, six feet is uh, a little small for a rock structure. I kept it at four feet tall because I know that's the height of the fences that need to be, and I don't want to disrespect any of my neighbors. Um, but maybe this is something we could possibly change in the community codes in the future, uh, making it a little bit longer. A lot of the uh, waterfall kits that we do are 10, 12 feet in length. Thank you, Steve. Does, do any of the commissioners have any questions for Steve? Is there anything that you would like to add, Hetty? No. Okay. Steve, I'm going to have you sit right here, and then um, I'm going to open up the public hearing. If there's anyone who would like to speak, yeah, I'd like sorry, to. sir. Before you do that, come, come forward. forward. Speak at the mic. Yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry, sir. Please come forward and speak at the mic. The meeting's recorded. And as you begin your comments, just please state your name sure. and your address. Yeah. And more. Anthony and, 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 Hill, 415 Harbor Drive South. Okay, sir. And do you can you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give before this body is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. You may begin now, sir. I live right next door, closest to where he's building the structure, and I'm totally fine with what he's doing. So, you know, I'll, I'll be closest to everything. He's going to be my neighbor, and I'm fine with it. So I'm smart to stay there. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate Thank that. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this agenda item? If not, we will close the public hearing. Hetty, is there anything else you'd like to say at this time? No, not at this time. Okay, and the applicant, Steve, is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, is there a motion by the commission? A motion to approve BLA case number 2019-06 for the And is there a second? I'll second that. Dan, would you please call the roll? Uh, discussion. I mean discussion. I, I would like to say something. I, I did look at this and I learned a lot about waterfalls with pools in looking at this and that's what Steve does for a living. So I got to see the different ideas that are throughout communities and homes and um, I do think in the future if this um, board decides to vote for this that we should look into maybe some changes to um, our waterfall, uh, so the, um, the way our ordinance are read. Mm -hmm. And um, with that if, that, if we decide to do that, then maybe you could give us some um, of what happens in some of the other communities that you are dealing with under uh, waterfalls. Okay. Dan, would you call the roll? Commissioner Kuthnagel? Uh, yes. Commissioner Fly? Yes. Commissioner Hanna? Yes. Mayor Commissioner Kennedy? Yes. I'm sorry, just a question. Yes. So, it doesn't affect the voters, just a question. Okay. So, hey, uh, in the minutes it said you had no idea where the six foot came from. Is it just, this is just something hanging out in the code from? Yeah. 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 I mean, he had some examples, I think, that he submitted. I saw those, yeah. 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 Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor. The motion carries. Thank you, Steve. Good luck on that. And I would love if you would put something together that we could look at in the future. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. With that, we're on BOA case 2019-17-1105, Bay Pine Boulevard. Randy, would you yes. agree? Uh, yes, Mayor. Uh, before we begin, uh, same chance as the last two. Uh, have any members of this body had any ex parte communications with the applicant for 1105 Bay Pine Boulevard, Board of Adjustment Case Number 2019-07. No. 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 Let the record front off respond in the negative. Have any of you conducted a site visit for the limited purpose of evaluating this application? No. 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 Let the record 
Flick all responded in the negative. With that, staff has already been sworn. Is there any member of the public, the applicant, their agent, their neighbor, anybody who intends to speak before this body, uh, who intends to offer testimony this evening? If you would, please stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you are going to give before this body is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Uh, the members of the public have been sworn. Uh, we now, just a brief reading of the subject. Board of Adjustment Case Number 2019-07, a variance request from Code Section 110-103A to allow for the enlargement of an, on a non-conforming premise to construct a pool for, properly locate, for property located at 1105 Bay Pine Boulevard in Rocks Beach, Florida, and legally described as first edition of re-revised map of Indian Beach, Block 86, Block 26, and a portion of Block 27, parcel number 01, 30, 14, 420, 480, 086, 0260. Uh, with that, staff, Okay, uh, this is a uh, property that's located in the single family residential district. Um, it does have two structures on the house that were built um, in, the, in the 50s. Um, what it, uh, she is requesting is to put a pool in, um, in the backyard. And again, we're enlarging the premises of a, a non-conforming structure, of conforming use. It doesn't matter if it's just a structure, it means premises too. So um, for that, um, so this is the survey of the existing um, parcels, of the different structures on the parcel. I just, I just took some shots going in through the backyard because this is where she wants to put the pool. And, um, and this is the drawing of the pool. You've got the back lot here, the back house, and then the uh, front house is here. So basically both of them could use the, um, the pool on the house. So. Just for a little history, we, I did talk to um, other people I mean, over a little course of time about expanding the structures themselves too. Um, we did not speak very highly of that as staff goes, but what they came down to was you know, that they'd like to put in a pool, or at least um, she just recently purchased this property. So. Does the commission have any questions for Hetty at this time? Andy, it looks like um, it's within all those setbacks. Right, yes, it would need all setbacks. Bill? That's fine. Um, if the applicants would like to come forward. Please state your name and address. Good evening. Hi, my name is Asuk Kim. I live in 1105 Bay Pine Boulevard. Um, I would like to put the pool for myself and my family. And uh, my both neighbors say that um, they do have no problem to put um, pool in my property. Do any of the commissioners have any questions for Suki? Did I say it right? Your name? Yes. Okay. Ed? Mm -hmm. Is it two properties or is it one property? Are there two houses or one house? There's two houses. Two houses on one parcel. Mm -hmm. Right. Mother-in-law suite in the back. And that's why it's not even conforming. Okay. Mother-in-law suite is in the back. Yes. Yeah. And that's a fully homesteaded. Yes. Thank you. Phil, do you have any questions? No. Okay. Do you have anything else that you would like to add at this time? If not, I'll have you sit and we'll open the public hearing. Would you like to say something? Yes, sir. Come on. Okay. Yes. Uh, this is Chris Arnold, uh, live on Indian Shores, uh, 19651 Golf Boulevard. I uh, just wanted to make sure everybody was aware that if this was a typical lot with a single family home on it, the pool does meet all the normal setbacks. We do a lot of pools in your town and all of our side setbacks and off the seawall. It's all in conformance. The only issue with having the permit issue is because it's a non-conforming lot. So okay. just wanted to make sure everybody was aware that it is within all the normal setbacks for the city at grade, no issues with anything like that. Okay. Does anyone thank have you. any questions for Chris? Okay. Great, thank you. Um, at this time, we'll open the public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to make a comment on this agenda item? Okay, if not, I'm going to close the public hearing. Uh, is there anything else that the applicant or the staff. Okay. Um, with that, we'll have discussion. I asked. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, 
Any discussion from the commission at this time? Uh, hearing none, is there a motion to for this uh, agenda item? I'll make a motion to approve VOA case number 2019-071105, the Pine Boulevard. Second. So, motion made by Diane, second by Ed. Diane, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Hanna? Yes. Commissioner Hoofnagel? Yes. Commissioner Flagg? Yes. Mayor Commissioner Kennedy? Yes. Motion carries. Um, enjoy your poll and thank you for coming before us tonight. Uh, next <coughs> item, other legislative matters would be ordinance number 2019-09 and a first reading. I'm going to give this to you, Deanne. Uh, first, Mayor, if oh, I may read it by title. Okay, you may read it by title. Just give me a moment to get to that item in the uh, packet materials. City of Indian Rocks Beach, Ordinance Number 2019-09, an ordinance of the City of Indian Rocks Beach, Florida, amending Chapter 6, Elections, Article 4, Election Administration, Section 22-10, Dates of Elections of the Code of Ordinances, amending the process for runoff and tied elections, making related findings, providing for codification, severability, and providing for an effective date. This has been a first reading of Ordinance Number 2019-09 by title only. This is the first reading of Ordinance 2009. And what it does, it deletes the runoffs for the municipal elections due to the fact that the supervisor of elections cannot support the city municipal runoff elections due to the um, presidential preference elections or any other election due, due to the um, military, how can I say? Absentee military mail ballots, the absentee ballots, there's not enough time to do it. And we are one of four cities that only have runoff elections. The governor's race doesn't even have a runoff election. It's all done by um, lot if there's a runoff. So I'm highly recommending that we do it without our runoff elections. And um, from the city attorney's perspective, we, uh, my office researched this at some length nationally and throughout the state of Florida. As noted, um, in Florida statutes, it actually provides for the drawing of lots in the event of a tie vote at the state legislative level. Uh, similarly, uh, in, in most communities, the, it either comes down to lots, straws, names out of a hat, coin flips, mostly games of chance. The exception to the rule is in some communities where a tie is reached, their, their community contemplates that the uh, city commission will then appoint the fifth, the, 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 the person, the city commissioners would appoint the person, and in some cases that's not even based on who was involved in the tie. It's just, okay, well, we couldn't come up with it, you guys pick someone. Um, the, based on the uh, law of averages and, and also the fact that this is this, the state of the law for the state of Florida, at a statewide level, we thought drawing the laws was the most appropriate uh, system here, and that is what is proposed in this ordinance as opposed to the present runoff election, and again, this was sort of a top-down thing where the supervisor of elections said, you need to change it, don't care how, use your home roll, pick away, but it needs to change, and so this is that proposed change. Okay, does the commission have any questions for Dan at this time? I'm going to open the public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to make a comment about this agenda item? If not, I'm going to close the public hearing and I'm going to look for a motion. Motion to approve ordinance 2019-09. Is there a second? Second. Motion made by Commissioner <coughs> Hoffnagel, seconded by Commissioner Hanna. Deanne, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Flagg? Yes. Commissioner Hanna? Yes. Commissioner Hoffnagel? I just would like to make a comment first that I, I think this is a fine solution that you guys have proposed. Uh, and yes, I support it. <laughs> yes, motion carries. Uh, agenda item 7B is appointments to the Planning and Zoning Board. We have a 1, 2, and 3, which would be a regular board member, a first alternate board member, and a second alternate member. 
and uh, board member, and I do believe that um, we have two of the app the applicants for this uh, board. And Dan, would you like to say anything else about this? I think we can call the two applicants up and have them introduce themselves to the city commission. Okay. We'll start with uh, Michael Campbell. If you'd like to come forward. Thank you. I'm Michael Campbell. I live at 80 Gulf Boulevard. I've lived there about two and a half years, but my parents built the house in 1979, and we came every year, and my four kids' heights are all on the poles underneath, so I feel like I've lived here longer than that. Um, by way of briefly my background, I was a lawyer in Florida and Wisconsin and California, worked for legal aid in Florida for 10 years, and uh, I don't think that can disqualify me. But I'm really tired now. Um, oh, I was giving you a blessing. That's a lot harder. Um, about 10 years for legal aid, and then the last 27 years before retirement, I was a judicial attorney for the California Court of Appeal. In my civilian life in California, I was on the board of directors of our homeowners association, which was a 1,275 uh, home development, and was president for two terms. And during that time, I uh, was involved in negotiation with, with planned unit developments that were uh, proposed for immediately contiguous to our development and was able to negotiate uh, certain changes without ever getting into NIMBY issues, um, including one I guess I am most proud of was there was an existing recycling transfer station and we were able to uh, negotiate hours of operation and what had to be moved inside <coughs> on the weekends and that sort of thing uh, without having to resort to litigation. And um, there were two others that I won't go into right now. Um, as I say, I feel like I've lived here my whole life. I've been interested in the city's development my whole life. And my vision is that Indian Rocks, and I think you all share this vision, Indian Rocks needs to maintain the balance of being a special place and not becoming Madera Beach, but on the other hand, we can't freeze it in time and um, pretend like modern life doesn't exist. And so uh, I would, looking at the, um, the duties and responsibilities of the Planning and Zoning Commission, I felt like uh, that was a place where I could uh, put my prior expertise to some use and that my vision for it is um, a reasonable one and a flexible one, keeping in mind the overall uh, goals of planning and zoning to maintain the community. So if anyone has any questions, I'd be very happy to answer them and try to, but otherwise that's my presentation. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you for putting your name in, too. Todd, if you want to like to come up. Todd, say your last name again for me. Good evening, uh, Todd Sterwell at 2012A Boulevard. Sounds like I'm buying for the first alternate impressive resume. But, uh, <laughs> I, bet. I, I just uh, I've served 30 years in the U.S. Coast Guard recently as a captain and a senior officer, planner. Uh, rescue helicopter pilot in Alaska. Uh, we retired, my wife Jamie and I, two and a half years ago from Alaska. And out of all the places we live, East Coast, West Coast, Alaska, Hawaii, we chose Indian Rocks. It just had a, a place, we'd never been here before, but we just came to this place and we have a home here and we made it our resident. And I've kind of watched for the last couple of years, been to the meetings and just kind of observed. And I figured, you know, I was a public servant for 30 years and now. I'd like to continue to serve if I could, to throw my hat in the ring to uh, help uh, the community. Um, I have a, a, a pretty impressive resume, if I'm so humble myself, 
Uh, I was a civil engineer undergraduate, I have a Master's of Public Administration from Harvard, and again, I was in, when I was in Alaska, I was in charge of the whole state of Alaska contingency and planning, preparedness for uh, an Arctic planning for the emerging uh, threats there. So again, I, I just want to serve, if I can, the city of Indian Rock since it's our home here and uh, throw my hat in the ring. So any questions? Where have you two been? Wow. wow, this is awesome. Blessed. Um, Dean, I have a question because Todd had said that you would also serve on the Board of Adjustments and Appeals. Is there, is there, is that there we have um, two? I know, I know, I'm just asking. Go ahead. We have two alternates on the Board of Adjustments and Appeals. Oh, we do already? Okay. No, we have two openings. Opening. Oh, but they're for alternates. They're for alternates, alternates also. I'll go for the alternate as well. So. <laughs> but we are going to be having, uh, you know, as the city attorney say, they are going to be having the sign ordinance, am I correct? The planning zone board, shall we? In the next coming months, yes. yes. Okay, okay yeah, we have a ballot, so why don't we fill it out and give it to Deanne? Thank you. Thank you. Please sign your names on them if there's provision for that. Please do so. Michael Campbell has three votes, and then Todd, how do you say your last name? Sterroy. Still, yeah. Sterroy is the second, is the first alternate, and that would make Bert Valerie, unless you don't want him to be third all, um, second alternate. He didn't receive any votes. We can leave it open, hope that he Oh, before we proceed to the second alternate, could you please read which commissioner voted in which manner, please? Um, Diane Flagg voted for Michael Campbell. Commissioner Hoopnagel voted for Michael Campbell. And Joe, uh, Mayor Kennedy voted for Michael Campbell. And Commissioner Handon voted for Todd Steroy. Thank you. And that's sunshine all reasons. Thank you. Um, what, how does the commission feel about um, Mr. Valerie Bandy, or do we just want to wait at this time? I, I'm happy to have anyone who wants, wants to, to serve, serve be on the alternates. And I thank you guys for yes. coming out, seriously. And I will tell you, as an alternate, I will bet that you will probably be a voting person pretty much every time, because there's always somebody that um, is not there. And the other thing that I was going to mention, that if when a regular member of the Board of Adjustments comes up, and if you would like to put your name in for that too, you can do that, if that's the way that you would really um, like to be on. But we would love to have a great group on the Planning and Zoning Board because we're going to be going over our signs. And we would, I would love for you to stay on that, if that would be okay with you. So, it's up to you. Okay. All right, thank you. So we have... So, I was just going to say, so is that consensus for two members expressed, anybody who wants to serve, we'd love to have them. It's my understanding there's one individual who applied for a position that has not been appointed and one remaining vacancy. So is it the consensus of this body that Mr. Valerie be appointed as the second alternate member of the board, planning and zoning board specifically? That's fine with me. Is that, is it, yeah. do we have an agreement on that? I agree with that. Bill? Diane? We have consensus. Okay, consensus. Can we just make one big motion just to keep the record clear in the minutes? That I, just... I motion to appoint uh, Bert Valerie as oh, no, no, the no, second alternate. Okay. 
regular board member Michael Campbell, second, first alternate of board yes. member Scott. Okay. Okay. Uh, we make a motion to appoint Michael Campbell as the representative on the uh, regular member on the planning and zoning board. I would like to make a further motion that Todd Sturwald be the first alternate on that board and that Kurt Valerie be the second alternate on that board. So motion is there a second? Motion by Ben Hoffnagel, second by, we'll say, Diane Black. <laughs> and um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you so service. much. We appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, we are at uh, work session items, which we have none. And I'm going to know if we have any. So I'm going to do that under other business. Okay. But, Okay, so uh, we don't have any other work session items, but under other business, agenda item number nine, Mr. Hoffnagel, would you like to start this off since this was your... Well, sure, I, would, I, mean, I wanted to just uh, have us, maybe someone could express gratitude to the Florida Wildlife Commission for something. Um, maybe a thank you note would be in order. Um, I, it what struck me is the, uh, I know it's difficult to track, But I really felt for some of the people who are saying, you know, these things are walking up and down our streets and killing our cats, and mm -hmm. how come we, how come we're really powerless to do anything about it? Mm -hmm. And it's not that expensive to get a trapper. I mean, I don't know. Do you guys have any thoughts about that? Let me, let me, I like, uh, go ahead. No, you go, Dad. I was going to say I talked to a few people after the meeting, and they said that they feel like they have a problem, and they would be willing to come and get together and get a trapper and. Take care of the situation on their street. I don't know how you only have to think about how as a city you could go from area to area because you may just be running them over to another location. It's almost impossible. Yeah, because the city's official view that I, I spoke to the manager about this and he felt like it was going to be hard because most of the nuisance of activity is happening on private property, mm -hmm. not on public property. Right, exactly. So, I just was. I mean, I'm just curious if you guys thought that that was sufficient to ask the homeowners to do it, or if there was any other solution. Phil, do you have anything you want to say? Well, I, one component I certainly believe that I, I got out of this, I didn't know that coyotes did like the rodents and cockroaches and all the other things. So I thought it was a, a, a very in-depth and well-presented study this evening. Um, I, I think also based on that, uh, I, I don't have a problem with coming up with some funding and some way to do that, as long as we, the city doesn't run into some liability because we're funding it. It's just the thought on that. But also an education component, because if we can get this kind of information out to the people, it seems to me that being uh, preventative and keeping your animals in or guarded or watched, not only does it make common sense, uh, but I think maybe some ideas are, would be, would be a proper Maybe on that, like that monthly uh, yeah. quarterly newsletter that uh, the mm -hmm. city sent out. Right. I, I think that there's uh, a good need for that based on some of the questions that I've heard tonight in the positions. So what, did, what did you think of um, I have, I started, after I got elected to be mayor last year, we started Monday with the mayor once a month. So three months ago, 16 people that had, had issues all over the board as far as the coyotes came to visit me and um, some didn't want you to touch them. The, the man that was in the back of the room who was very vocal was very upset his 10 year old cat or you know had been eaten up and they found the carcass which I would be very upset about that myself and um, one of the young ladies had a trapper's phone number we called the trapper right there at the meeting and we had a discussion with him um, the city is not permitted to go on private property. That's the first bit right there. So the trapper charged $300. And um, he said that because we were calling and, you know, we, we are concerned because it does seem like they have come out of, you know, all of a sudden nowhere, um, 
that he would drop it to $200. And of the 16 people that were there, there was only one young woman that said that she would pay it. So, you know, I found that kind of odd because there were so many that were very upset about it, you know, and the fact that we couldn't go on private property. Um, some said that there, uh, a couple people said that there were, uh, they're not called nests, what are they, what's their habit, not some kind of, wherever they live, they got, um, dens, yeah. yeah, the dens were on, um, over on East Golf Boulevard, but I have you know that the city manager went over, put his boots on with a bunch of the guys, and they went over to, there to look, and there were no, that was not, a den whatsoever. We've had, you know, I hear that they're on 12th. I, I, I know that we believe, I don't know this for a fact, but we believe there are three in this area. Um, they have been seen on, people have cameras at their homes, and they have been seen, and mostly, um, I, well, I've not heard that they've ever been seen unless it's dusk. Um, or if it's um, real, real early in the morning, they've been seen um, in, in different areas. Um, as far over as, um, I want to say, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, I mean, there's all over, and many cats, many, many cats have been um, killed. And I will say um, the rats seem to be less mm -hmm. around here. I don't know if all of you have noticed that, that but I, if you weren't at the meeting, they had a coyote that had, I don't know if somebody had got, killed it or it had gotten killed, and they opened it up and it had 48 rats in it from a five hour period. I mean, that's pretty unbelievable, you know? Yeah. So, um, I do feel uh, a lot of concern about this and um, I, you know, I, I don't really know what the, the one man brought up. We have those big bunnies that are all different colors that used to live around here, and you'd see them all the time. They're all gone. I mean, somebody, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, I um, I don't think, um, Commissioner Hannah, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but um, I don't think that's a good idea. That um, the, the only thing that I think that we could do is if we, as a city, um, wanted to put traps on our property, any of our properties where they might be seen, that could be something that we could investigate. You know? So we could, we could theoretically put a trap back in front of the public services building. Sure. I mean, theoretically, we can put it on public property. On public property, right. yes. Our, our, yes. And then, so if we just, so we catch it, then what do we do? So what do we do we then? Use the, tra people? the trapper takes it away. And they do not relocate. They do not relocate them, and that was another problem with some of them because then uh, they don't. But that was interesting too in the in the conversation because we were told by the traveler that they do not they don't relocate them because they don't blend with other animals. But then they were talking about how there were dens, and I, I don't know maybe I misunderstood, but they said that other animals were going into their dens at different times, and they. I don't know, but what we were told by the trapper is, if they catch them, they have to kill them. Um, I think Ed had a, a, a reasonable request, and then with our newsletter, if we could send out some of the some of the things that they mentioned that we could be better at, as far as garbage control and um, yeah. leaving out pet food and things that would attract the coyotes. Uh, they're still going to be around, but if the food source is limited, maybe they'll go on to somewhere else, you know. So I don't see where just an educational piece in the newsletter or a separate one sent out by the city might be of value to some people. Can't hurt you. Yeah. And you know, Brian, I don't, because I know you were there and I'm, I'm sure you're writing about it. One of the things that there were people who came late at the meeting and didn't get you know, some of the, the items that the uh, Robin from the Wildlife said that, um, you know, there's only two that in 45 years that have actually killed somebody, you know. So, you know, there people are, are thinking that. And, and the number that had been attacked was very minimal, too. Eight. Yeah, eight. So, I mean, I think those kinds of things, if they're mentioned, 
in either our newsletter or your newspaper in the, in the newspaper to let some of those people who came in late and then you know who had had issues with losing animals. I think if those things are mentioned, that um, I, I think their statistics were really great. I thought they were out. awesome. Yeah, yes. you know, snake so bites, alligator attacks. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think about it, it, it was real low on the totem pole as far as that goes. And, and the fact you know everybody's talking about the rabies, and they said that that's that there wasn't even a case, was there? No, there wasn't even a case of the rabies. It was that with the mange. Is the mange, mange. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think that's a good discussion, and so um, we'll. Dan, can you make a, your, a point of talking to the city manager or putting in your minutes that, you know, for the next newsletter, is there something you like to add to this? Uh, I would just say that any course of action the city takes would have to be evaluated by the for okay. exposure and liability and what's permissive under uh, the Florida Administrative Code. You know, the um, Florida Wildlife, Tom, made mention that Satellite Beach, I believe it is, has mm -hmm. had a problem and they have a new ordinance that they put in and maybe it would be a good idea to get that ordinance so that we could look at it. I don't know if it would be helpful to us or not, but I mean, yeah, just to see what they're doing down there. Yeah, it's always interesting to see what other people who are struggling with this are. I mean, uh, Randy, just a quick question like, uh, as a city, do we have a liability for not doing anything? Or be perceived as not doing anything? Uh, well, I would say that there's, few layers to that question. The perception of not doing anything is different and has its own political consequences sure. and I don't advise on that. Mm -hmm. As far as the legal side, um, ordinarily there's not an issue with saying we exist in a space that nature exists. Uh, we are no more, we have no more of a duty to eradicate coyotes than we do snakes, sharks, or other things that may, you know, uh, cause peril to people. Mm -hmm. uh, so no, I, I would not say that that creates okay. some kind of affirmative duty on our part. However, if we do assume that duty um, voluntarily, that may come with liability that we wouldn't otherwise have. So I would, I would just like to look at that and see what, what prudence and, and if there is any um, authority for how that shakes out on the back. The, uh, you know, the, the complaint that you receive on the social media sites is, you know, I pay all these taxes, why, why not put up with this nuisance activity? Oh, uh, for sure. I, I mean, and conversely, I, I've been Texas and I've had rats in my home recently, and I would love to have a guy to come around and take care of before my harvest is fine. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. you know, th yeah. that, 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 that concern, though, Commissioner, speaks to a, more of what would be a political consequence rather than a legal consequence. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, I understand. And it's kind of telling that if you have that many people who were ostensibly concerned, but then no one wanted to put up 200 bucks to get. I, I was right. absolutely shocked at that. Well, the and, and the one girl who did was the least one that I think should have been, I mean, she was just, I, I was just amazed at that. Mm -hmm. You know, even, like I said, that we got him down $100, you know, I mean, yeah. if he said, you know, if, it, if you're that concerned about it, then, you know, we'll come out and we'll do it for $200, you know. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so that was, that was, you know. So in the end here, we're going to do some education mm -hmm. in our newsletter and possibly get the ordinance for Satellite Beach to look at in the future. Does that sound okay with everyone? Yes, it does. Okay. You want me to email it to everyone? That would be awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before we leave, two things. I'd like to introduce you to my good friend, Councilperson Sandy Barnes from Canada, who I grew up with. And she comes in November every year. Um, we went to high school together, known each other very well. Sandy, you want to say anything at all? Because uh, she just came. She stays in my apartment downstairs with her husband for a few weeks in November, and she's here, so she came to see how how the commission was treating me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you good? I'm good. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Good. And the other thing I just wanted to mention: there are some people in the audience that were at the women's tea, and we had 240 people, and uh, I'm. I see, you know, several of you here tonight, and um, I just hope next year that anyone who didn't come comes because it was a beautiful day, and um, it was really, I think, inspiring. So hopefully, we'll see you next year at the women's tea. And Phil is always really good about taking pictures and making everybody look beautiful. So that's really good. Cool. That good subjects to work with. There you go. All right. Um, is there any other business to come before this board? 
And uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Okay. We'll see you next month. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. All in favor, bye. 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 bye.